new career ahead of you. That was wonderful. The Czech shirt or something. I don't know. Um, now, whilst we're talking about uh, social media, if anybody wants to shout out or celebrate anything or wants me to just you know, uh, tell their other half off or something, um, you can tweet me tonight, um, Comedy James on Twitter. Just tweet me through here. I'll put it on my brain. I'm going to have a bit more. So I do we'll kick up the tentacles. No, I'm not. Anyway, uh, it's, uh, that's what I'll say anyway. So, uh, yeah, keep, do tweet me uh, anything you want me to uh, talk to you about this evening uh, throughout the show, and, uh, and we'll continue to have a laugh now. Um, I'll, I'll put some slightly older people, I'll give out a fact number. Uh, so, um, <laughs> that's very confusing. I'm between kids, Nigel. Um, it's fine. Right, okay, we're going to move straight on now. Um, and we've got a shorter act, not shorter, which is shorter, but it's a shorter, it doesn't matter. Um, it's a, she's gonna, you've probably seen her or heard her on local BBC Radio and TV. Only a big hand one person. Um, please, <laughs> uh, more than that, but please put your hands together for the wonderful Sam Fraser! Here. I'm 48, 
I thought my babe days were well and truly over. And it seems they're not. I know you're looking at me thinking, 48, you're doing well. But it's true. Uh, I was born in 69, year of the cock. <laughs> a guy tried to correct me on that one time. He said, um, oh, you mean rooster? You were born in the year of the rooster. And I looked at him and I said, why would I say rooster when I can say cock? <laughs> uh, so, younger women than me might be happy to be oppressed by their underwear, but I've long since uh, concluded that nobody should be wearing pants you can put on sideways without even noticing. <laughs> so, so I've given up on them as a daily thing and I only get them out for weather girl days. I think I must have given up uh, wearing thongs as a regular thing when I read an article about them in the Reader's Digest. So, no fake news there. Uh, and the article said that um, wearing thongs contributed to the spread of E. coli. And uh, up until that point, I hadn't given rectal bacteria a second. <laughs> Suddenly, quite a lot less sexy than I thought they were. Um, so it may have been then that I gave up on thongs, or it could have been when I stopped having my rather niche sexual fantasy. Um, it was one where I was stuck in a lift with Dave from Shawadi Wadi. <laughs> Do you remember him? With the razor sharp cheekbones. Bloody loved him. Anyway, Dave and I are stuck in the lift, and uh, he rips off my thong with his teeth and goes down, and then up, and then down, because the lift mechanism is broken. Uh, and eventually, the fire brigade comes along, and a man in uniform, brandishing an enormous hose, rescues me really quite hard for quite a long time. It's very satisfying. But anyway, I've given up on Dave, and I've given up on, uh, on thongs. The truth is, I'm not really sure how I became a weather girl at all. It certainly wasn't a burning ambition of mine. Because when I was at school, there were only two things I wanted to be. One, Felicity Kendall, the sitcom heroine of the UK. Or two, Debbie Harry, sexy lead singer of punk band Blondie. The trouble was, when I put on the Dungarees a la Barbara from The Good Life, I just looked like a quick fit mechanic. <laughs> and when I put on the leather skirt, a la Debbie Harry, I looked like I should be on special offer in DFS. <laughs> Easy terms, naturally. So what I did become when I left school and graduated university was an English teacher. Any teachers in tonight? Yeah. What the hell are you doing here? You should be at home with that horrible Sunday night feeling. Actually, about the marking you haven't done. Yeah, marking is the worst part of the job of the teacher. Um, I hated it. It used to take up far too much of my time. Uh, when you're a teacher, I swiftly concluded that uh, what you want is a class full of the really thick kids. Because you can set them a time, they say, and they'll just draw a trainer. So you can get through a full set of those uh, without even taking your eyes off Holby City. That makes marking a dream. <laughs> What you don't want is the try-hard dyslexic. Uh, let me tell you. I once marked an essay on the novella of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Anybody remember that from school? Yes. Set four in tonight. Anyway, it's a lovely, lovely story about a short guy with aspirations called George and his slow-witted, gigantic friend, Lenny. And what this kid wrote was, Lenny used to lick rabbis. <laughs> well, I puzzled long and hard over this. Lenny used to lick rabbis. Uh, trying to work out what he meant. And, you know, perhaps he had discovered some Judeo-erotic strand in the novel that I had missed. Of course, what he meant was Lenny used to like rabbits. <laughs> but I gave him a gold star anyway because I spent a really lovely afternoon wondering if I would like to lick rabbis <laughs> and if those rabbis would like to lick me right back. Because <laughs> hell, I already knew I like rabbits. <laughs> uh, any rabbis in the audience, by the way, see me later because that fantasy is still 
working for me. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, the other thing that I didn't like about being a teacher was the lack of anonymity. Because when you're a teacher, you know loads of kids and you know all of their families and you cannot escape them. So I remember going shopping one time in a, a town 20 miles away from the one that I worked in. And I was in Boots because I was buying a friend's birthday present. And he had recently revealed to me that he had never used, now I know it's a Sunday, uh, so I'm going to try and put this delicately, he had never used a vibrating pleasure ring, sort of battery operated hoopla. <laughs> going to make me say it on a Sunday, aren't you? He had never used a cock ring. And I thought, great idea, cheap, novelty present, we're getting in boots now. Um, so I popped in picked up a, a, a cock ring and because it was my husband's birthday that same week, I picked up one with him too. Now, I was brought up a Catholic. I had to fight the Catholic in me to stride purposefully towards the checkout thinking I am a self-determining, autonomous 21st century woman and I can do this. Even though I've got the slightly sweaty cleavage, which is what happens when I get nervous. Anyway, I put those cock rings down on the checkout and the cashier looked up at me and she smiled. And then she said in a really, really loud voice so that the entire queue could hear me, Oh my God, it's Sam Fraser! I looked at her and I did not recognise her. I'm so sorry, I said. Oh, I don't recognise you. Uh, how did we know one another? I'm Amy's grandma. She was Jemima in your chitty chitty bang bang one year. Well, you could poach an egg in the sweat between my tits at this point. Because, boy, that was a hot place to be. Anyway, I give the woman credit. She picked up those two cock rings and she said to me breezily, these are on special offer, three for two. Get yourself another one. So, my husband had a doubly happy birthday. Uh, anyway, that's about it for me, because um, my slot has been filled. That doesn't always happen <laughs> on a Sunday, let me tell you. Uh, so can I just say thank you for bearing with me, thank you for listening tonight, thank you for being here for a really uh, important cause. Uh, Breast Cancer Haven is a great charity and I'm really proud to be associated with it, and with raising breast health awareness. My breasts have given a lot of people a lot of pleasure over the years. Uh, and hell, without them, how would the BBC know how little to pay me? Thank you very much.